As a round of severe weather strikes Kentucky, local emergency crews say they are prepared to respond when and if needed. And we have some tips on managing your power bill as below freezing temperatures return to the region tonight. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. It's been an active day across the state with several storm damage reports coming out of central Kentucky. Now the threat for severe weather is ending. Now our attention turns to possible snow. Let's check in with meteorologist Evan Hatter for the latest on this first alert weather day. Evan. Well, we still do have the potential for some gusty winds with any storms that we see this evening. Those continue to push through the region. In fact, you can see the backside of those storms from London Corbin Airport right now. We're at 52 at London Corbin Airport as we continue to see uh, rain on the tarmac and rain pushing on out of the region. Temperatures as the rain has moved in have dropped from the upper 50s into the lower 50s and upper 40s. You see the heaviest of the rain right now as we head into parts of southeast Kentucky. There was London where it's a little drier right now. Now, but southern parts of Perry County currently seeing quite a bit of heavy rain that extends into parts of not Floyd and Pike counties and that'll be pushing on through places like Harlan and Letcher County over the next little bit. Even some heavy rain right down to parts of eastern Pike County and into southern West Virginia. The focus today has been across the deep south. Multiple tornadoes across portions of Alabama into Georgia. Now South Carolina where tornado watches remain in effect. For us, we're going to change over from rain to snow as we head later on into tonight. You see those storms pushing on out of the region. A more in-depth view coming up in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Several homes were damaged west of Harrodsburg in Mercer County. The National Weather Service has already surveyed the damage there, and with winds of 100 miles per hour, the tornado was given an EF1 rating, one of at least two tornadoes confirmed in Kentucky today. It caused damage to the YMCA building in Harrodsburg. The Mercer County Emergency Management uh, director says the Cornishville Road area appears to be the hardest hit. Some trees have fallen onto homes, and at one point in Mercer County, more than 5,000 customers were without power. It's overwhelming regardless of what this happens, but then when you see all the people that come to help and jump in and bring food and totes and boxes and just automatically start packing up your stuff so that it doesn't get ruined, it means a lot. The latest update from utility company shows nearly all the people who lost power in Mercer County have it back now. A local emergency crews say they are prepared to respond to any weather that may come our way the next few hours. WIMT's Olivia Calfee has some tips from first responders to help keep you safe. From tornadoes to severe thunderstorms or snow, first responders say they are prepared for any weather that Mother Nature throws this way. We have our four-wheel drive units in service and stocked and ready to go with fluid warmers, uh, additional blankets, and uh, we have the studded tires on our two-wheel drive ambulances. That way we can access uh, patients that need to be accessed that need to go to the hospital in an emergency situation. Also adding a few tips for safety and various weather conditions. You want to be able to make sure that you got ample amount of drinking water, some canned non-perishable foods, just things like that, just to be prepared in case you're not going to be able to get anywhere for a couple of days. He says making sure you have gas for your generator or an alternative heating source is important. Preston Hayes with the Hindman Volunteer Fire Department says road safety is also imperative. Just being safe on the road, take your time, leave a little bit earlier if you're going to work wherever you're headed to. And he says frozen water lines have been an issue recently and it is important to prepare. We would advise to try to insulate your water lines, maybe leave those at a steady drip. We see a lot of structure fires as a result of improperly trying to thaw water lines. And in a severe weather situation, Perry County EMS has new high visibility jackets, providing safety measures for everyone. We're e going to be easy to spot in the bad weather. Uh, everybody down here has got a jacket, so this is just a way to keep us safer from uh, being hit by a car or anything. And it's also a way for you to be able to identify us e easier. First responders do ask for patients as they respond to calls during severe weather situations. In Perry County, Olivia Calfee, WYMT Mountain News. 
Adkins also says not to forget about your animals outside. If possible, bring them in or to a safer location depending on the situation. And you can stay uh, up to date and weather aware with the WYMT First Alert weather app. It gives you the latest weather alerts and radar. And it works with cellular data. If you lose power and Wi-Fi, you can also find the latest watches and warnings on our website, WYMT.com. And also, if we get any closings in, I believe we have one right now. We might have a few more in the morning. Well, you all may remember those bitterly cold temperatures we saw during the holidays. And that Arctic blast had us turning up our heat to stay warm. WYMT's Dakota Maker has talked with Kentucky Power about upcoming utility bills and offers ways customers can manage future weather-related bills. Kentucky Power wants its customers to know when temperatures plummet, energy use goes way up. Corporate communications manager Sarah Nussbaum says our bills typically reflect that. The other factor affecting the temperature that the it is unsure how much a customer's bill could increase from the Arctic blast because it all depends on individual energy usage. Kentucky Power encourages customers to make sure their homes are energy efficient to cut down on those higher bills, double checking duct work to see if it is properly installed and your home is properly insulated to keep warm air in. Let us know uh, what your issues are so we can out. On With plans like the average monthly payment plan, it averages out 12 months of your electric use and bill cost, which allows you to pay around the same amount every month. Other assistance can come from the Community Actions Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP. That is on a first come, first serve basis. Dakota Makris, WIMT Mountain News. Now, the LIHEAP program is currently taking applications. You can call your community action agency for more information. A Southern Kentucky Sheriff's Office is investigating after two people were arrested with outstanding warrants. Police say 43-year-old Jared Watson and 48-year-old Desma Phillips were arrested Tuesday during a traffic stop. During that stop, detectives found both people had warrants. Meth and a glass smoking pipe were also found in the car. Both Watson and Phillips were taken to the Pulaski County Detention Center. A Knott County man was sentenced to more than 24 years in federal prison earlier this week. Police say they tried to stop a car in February 2022 and 44-year-old Tony Minor ran from police. He was later arrested and officials found baggies, a scale, and more than 100 grams of meth. Law enforcement searched Minor's home and found more than 40 grams of fentanyl and a loaded gun. Minor pleaded guilty to the charges in August of 2022. He'll be under supervision for eight years after he's released from prison. Officials with the Whitley County Sheriff's Office are looking for a stolen ATV. Take a look at your screen. Deputies say this 2002 Suzuki Ozark ATV was stolen from Goins Road in the Rockholds community. The theft happened late Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning. If you have any information, you can call the Sheriff's Office at 606-549-6006. Today in Floyd County, Attorney Ned Pillersdorf held a meeting with former clients of Eric C. Kahn to discuss recent developments in what he calls the Kahn fiasco. Many of Khan's former clients were happy to hear about a settlement from the Social Security Administration that would help the so-called Forgotten 500 get their benefits reinstated. Pillersdorf says while the agreement is not 100% of what he or his clients wanted, it's a huge step forward. We didn't get everything we wanted, uh, but we got 9 out of 10. These people have been without benefits for six and a half, half years. If they simply request a hearing, they get their monthly benefits reinstated. And if they win the hearing, we're talking about them getting about $100,000 at least in back pay, six years. Congressman Hal Rogers released a statement regarding the settlement. He says, quote, every dollar that can be rightfully refunded to the victims of Eric C. Kahn's fraudulent scheme is warranted. I applaud the attorneys who have volunteered their time and efforts to continue the legal fight on behalf of Kahn's remaining former clients. From day one of this battle, I have pushed the Social Security Administration to move swiftly and justly on behalf of the hundreds of individuals in eastern Kentucky who suddenly lost their main source of income eight years ago as a result of Khan's scheme. It is good news for the remaining victims to have a final day in court with the possibility of receiving their due back pay so they can finally close this 
difficult chapter. The Appalachian Regional Commission is offering $6.3 million in grant money to boost broadband access in dozens of communities. Members say it will be the first ever grant funded through the Appalachian Regional Initiative for Stronger Economies. It's designed to provide support to 50 underserved communities in 12 Appalachian states. Members say the focus of the project will be to help communities compete for billions of dollars in federal broadband funding that will be available later this year. Yesterday, the East Kentucky Dream Center reopened for its first meal in its new space. The Dream Center serves the community by providing hot meals, baby items, and even counseling and resources for addiction. Executive Director Rachel Dodson adds that the new location, uh, this with the new location, this will better help the Dream Center grow and serve its community more effectively. But we keep growing. We continue to add services. We continue to see the needs of those struggling, whether it's just through poverty, whether it's just through addiction, or whether it's grandparents raising grandchildren that just need, you know, a, a hand up. The Dream Center's second meal in their new home is Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 463 Hambly Boulevard in Pikeville. We'll have more from the Dream Center tonight at 11. Coming up, snow showers in the forecast tonight and tomorrow, especially in those highest elevations. The latest breakdown coming up after this. Plus, addiction recovery specialists come together in Harlan to talk about the raging war on fentanyl.